Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, pack one, pick one. Open a pretty sweet rare. Ayara. Definitely very powerful in the mono black decks. Potentially playable into color decks, but of course much better in mono black. Speaking of which, Sir Conrad is also quite a bomb in uh, any deck that can cast it. Can usually take over any game that's stalled out. So it's very close in power level to Ayara in the decks that can cast it. But Conrad goes into two color decks a bit better than Ayara. So as a first pick, I'm kind of leaning Sir Conrad. Taking a look at the rest of the pack, um, I mean, nothing close to these two. Sage is fine. Guide Mother can lead to some nice aggressive adventure decks. Some other playable cards. Ginger Brute also turned out to be a pretty powerful card in this format for aggressive decks. I think I'm leaning Sir Conrad over Ayara. And then we can hope to wheel maybe Wicked Guardian, Barrow Witches. Also plays well with Sir Conrad as it's a knight. But uh, yeah, a nice uncommon to start our draft with. Second pick, best card in the pack overall. Into the story, if you've got the enablers, uh, which isn't always the case, but um, it's not too difficult to pick up a few cards that mill the opponent. And as a game naturally progresses, this will eventually just cost uh, four mana. And draw four is quite powerful. Uh, other good cards. The Witch Talker is great. Doesn't ask much of you. For four Trampler for four is already good. And you even get a food token on top. So that one's also great. And then there's some other playable cards. But those are the standout cards here. So blue-black. Typically kind of a more controlling deck. Has a bit of mill themes throughout. Green-black is a more mid rangey deck, usually cares about food. So both are reasonable. I wouldn't fault anyone for taking one over the other. All right, let's uh, give the Witch Stalker a shot here. And reward it as we get some other nice green cards. Adversary, probably the pick over second Witch Stalker. Just such a house if... Um, you ever play against another green deck and play this on turn two. I've been on the receiving end of this a few times and it doesn't feel great. Uh, Forever Young, also nice cards if we can uh, get it, especially with Sir Conrad, quite a combo as you get to drain the opponent for each creature that you return from the graveyard. But uh, I'll take the adversary for now. And fourth pick, got a few options. I'm not like locked into black green by any means, but Sir Conrad is a very strong incentive for me to play black. And we've got two very good green cards. So it's gonna take something pretty special for me to move out of black green, but uh, again, not impossible. So golden egg counts as food for any potential food synergies. It can trip, so it's a pretty reasonable card. Lost Legion, uh, double black might be tricky if we end up like heavy green usually. You prefer being heavy on one color over the other, so you can make use of all the adamant synergies and the lands that care about certain uh, basic land types in play. So I would prefer to be heavy green with a bit of black or heavy black with a bit of green, but uh, usually the green decks, the way this is shaping up, I uh, want to be a bit heavier green for cards like Out Muscle, which is quite good. So Lost Legion, I don't often find myself playing it in black green, it's usually better in black-white where you have more knight synergies or just the more mono-black uh, decks where the double black casting cost is not really an issue. But in black-green specifically, while well, it can still be fine, I'm not the biggest fan. So I think I'm leaning Golden Egg because of that. Alright, so here we have a bunch more good options. Clockwork Servant, very good if you can get a card out of it. So if we are going to end up heavy green, then um, I could see this being okay. Even if you don't cast it turn three, if you cast it like turn five, it's still fine. 
There is the Forever Young, which I mentioned earlier would be quite good in this deck. Carver is also a playable card if we need a combo trick or if we care about adventures. I think I'm probably taking Forever Young here. Also has an added bonus of being very good against a mill deck, if you can uh, ever cast it. Scalding Cauldron, totally serviceable card. So that's going to be my pick. If we were playing Bus of Three, you could also make a case for Memory Theft, although we can usually pick those up later. As Memory Theft is a pretty decent sideboard card. And that's a pretty late Merleaf Pixie, so maybe a sign that blue-green as a color combination is open. But there's some other good cards. Pear, Spider and Witch are all fine. And uh, I don't really have a reason to move into blue-green, given that we have some powerful black cards. So Tempting Witch is definitely a way to close out the game in a food-heavy deck. We've got the Golden Egg and the Witch Talker that already make food tokens. Could take the Curious Pear if we want more food enablers but I'm kind of looking for a payoff card as well. Spider can be quite good against a bunch of flying creatures, which is the weakness of black-green. So if we don't have enough removal, having a few reach creatures against flyers is good. I think I'm probably leaning witch, and I don't really see a reason to take Pixie, because I don't want to give up on Sir Conrad that easily. And I think witch would be actively good in this deck. So let's take the witch. Alright, some pretty nice cards late here. Foreboding Fruit looks good, even if I'm not going to adamant it all that often. In the late game we're going to have three black mana, and then it's going to be even better. And sometimes you can just cast it to draw two anyway. Uh, that over Servant is a close call. Servant, of course, is a bit more restrictive in order to draw cards than the Foreboding Fruit. So it is a, a close decision. Like right now I'm pretty evenly split between black and green. So it's going to be difficult to get the servant in play and draw the card early. And if we do get the extra food token from fruits, it could also have good synergy with Tempting Witch, for example. So I think I'm leaning fruit over servants. If we had like a couple extra black cards or green cards and we're leaning more heavily towards one color, I would uh, probably take Servant over it. Ginger Brutes might make the cut. It is food for any food synergies. It's especially good if we get the 5 mana Keeper of Fables that cares about non-humans dealing damage to the opponent. So we might play it if we pick one of those up. Otherwise I don't often play Ginger Brute in Black Green just because it's not an aggressive deck. So the 1-1 one, one Haster is not relevant unless the opponent has their own Ginger Brute that you want to block. Might main deck a Return to Nature if we don't end up with enough playables. And don't think we're playing any of these, but I'll take a Squire just in case. Uncommon for the Vaults. Alright, so pretty happy with our first pack. Got some very good cards in Adversary and Sir Conrad. Witch Stalker is also quite good. Don't have much in the way of removal other than the Scalding Cauldron, so that's one of the things we need to work on. And then overall, just looking for more good quality black and green food related cards. Alright, I've got a few options here. Once Upon a Time, definitely pretty reasonable card. Even Unlimited, it's just a way to kind of smooth out your draws in the early game. Maybe hit your land drops and in the late game look for more action. And we are a creature deck for the most part, so finding Witch Stalkers, Adversaries and Sir Conrad's is uh, quite good. The alternative here... I wouldn't mind the Swordmaster, especially if we pick up some more Knights. The Barrow Witches would be good with Sir Conrad. Uh, Spider would make the cuts, and maybe a Cabin if we end up heavy green, so... There's some other playables. Not the biggest fan of Giant Opportunity, unless we're like the super synergistic food deck. Which maybe we are. We do have quite a few food cards already. So I could see this being playable in this deck. But uh, I don't consider this a very high pick, unless you're the super dedicated food deck. So let's take the Once Upon a Time. I've got a few good options here. Oatsworn Knights, while not an amazing card, it is quite good if you can get it out turn 3. 
which of course it is double black so it's not going to be super easy on the mana but uh, still potentially quite powerful Merrily Frider would be excellent as we have lots of ways to use the ability and can use it as removal especially good with the fight spell out muscle if we can make this indestructible fight something and then use the ability to kill something else but we don't have any of those yet not our tempting which would also be reasonable so we do have a few options both these two cards are knights for any potential knight synergies too don't have a ton of uh, three drops necessarily although i guess we also don't have a ton of two drops my only creature is a Garen Brick Squire, which I don't intend to play in the final build. So both would be good additions for the curve. Eh, I, I don't mind playing the Knights. It's not necessarily the best fit within Black Green, because we're more kind of a mid rangey food deck, whereas Knight shines in more aggressive decks. But it is fun to play with it. I haven't really had the chance to play this one in Limited yet. So let's give it a try. Ooh, wow. Another Sir Conrad. Can't really go wrong with it. Another Fear Switch Stalker would have also been good. But uh, I'm not gonna look a gifted horse in the mouth. We have Lockthwain Paladin potentially, although we need Adamant for it to be really good. Acolyte can ramp into a turn for Sir Conrad, so that's nice. Garen Brick Paladin's quite good at 5 if we can adamant it, although we already have two copies of Sir Conrad at 5, so we don't want to overdo it. I still stand by what I talked about with the Lost Legion earlier, even though we did pick up Osworn Knight, which has the same mana restriction. And then the Carver would also be fine, in order for Boating Fruit. I think, given how this deck is shaping up, we can probably use the extra mana from the Rose Thorn Acolytes. It does also help with casting turn 3 Oathsworn Knight. Imagine we have one Swamp and two Forests. I can use the Adventure from the Acolyte on turn 3 to cast the Oathsworn Knight on curve. So it does also help there. And uh, given the double Sir Conrad, Forever Young, we seem to have a pretty good late game. So I just want extra mana to be able to use all those powerful cards. And so Barrow Witches. Well, I don't want many more five drops in this deck, but Barrow Witches getting back Sir Conrad is about as good as it gets. Also gets back Oathsworn Knight. So seems pretty good. Uh, Smith and Swordmaster would also be okay. There's also like a Bone Crusher Giant that we could splash. I do have a Golden Egg to help that, but. I think our deck is powerful enough within two colors here that I don't need to go out of my way to splash a Bone Crusher Giant. But yeah, fifth pick Bone Crusher is pretty crazy. I think I'm leaning Barrow Witches. I think it would be actively good in this deck, getting back most of our best cards. And then um, hopefully I can pick up more two drops later. A golden Egg would also be fine. All right, another Tempting Witch is pretty tempting. Uh, Tree Folk could also make the cuts, although, again, we already have quite a few expensive cards. And don't have too many creatures that have, like, great synergy with uh, picking up some plus one plus one counters, don't have any evasive creatures. So let's take the second Tempting Witch and make sure we don't have a very high curve. Noble could be okay, works well with food tokens that we can sacrifice to put counters on it. Jousting Dummy is a knight to go with our Barrow Witches. Those are the considerations here. I guess that's true, we do have a Ginger Brute, but I don't really intend to play Ginger Brute in the final build unless we pick up the Keeper of Fables. So that's why I didn't mention it with the Tree Folk. So I think I like Noble, we need more 2-drops and it's a relatively synergistic 2-drop, especially with cards like Golden Egg. And we already have a Return to Nature if we want to main deck it. Another Acolyte seems fine over Lash of Thorns. And we wield both the Swordmaster and the Spider. There's also a Cabin that we can consider. But we seem pretty 
deep into black as well, so I don't know how good Cabin's gonna be. Probably leaning Swordmaster. We do have a decent chunk of Knights now with Osworn Knights and Double Sir Conrads. And a 2 1 Lifelinker for two is still reasonable. So, yeah, the cards I'm kind of looking to cut Squire, Ginger Brute. Hopefully, we don't have to main deck Return to Nature, but it's not the uh, end of the world if we do. And then, yeah, just looking for more good removal. We're pretty light on removal, that's one of the potential uh, holes in this deck. Bake into a pie would be amazing. But uh, I guess flying creatures are also an issue, so that's maybe a reason to take the Spore Cap. But we do have quite a few 3s in the meantime, whereas we don't have many 2s. So I think I still take Swordmaster for Curve. Wow, we wield Merrily Frider. That's a gift. And yeah, might play the Appetite. We've got some food to synergize with it. And... Huh. Cabin versus Second Foreboding Fruit. So, as I mentioned a few times, we are pretty split between black and green. But then again, I also don't have many turn one plays, so if we do have a hand with Cabin in it, without uh, many forests, we can just play the tapped on turn one, and it's not a big deal. And then if we do draw it late, we might get a free food token, which represents three damage with Tempting Witch. So that's uh, pretty interesting too. So I think I'm leaning cabin over second fruit. And not a sword master, that's nice. All right, so I mean, can't really ask for better cards to wheel. We pretty much got everything we wanted out of those packs. So hopefully we can open some good removal in the last pack, bake into pie, reef soul, and out muscle are high up on our list. And then hopefully a couple extra knights for the Swordmaster, maybe some more food synergy cards, like the uh, three mana hunter or the five mana flyer that can kill stuff if we sacrifice food. Alright, pretty happy with a Falmar Knight as well. 1-1 one, one Death Touch is great, and we can draw a card with it too. It is also a knight for the Swordmaster, so even more synergy there, and we can hope to wheel either another Swordmaster or Tempting Witch. So yeah. Let's take the Falmar Knight. Ooh, this pack has a lot of good cards. Revenge of Ravens is great in a lot of situations. If you're facing an aggressive deck, this basically blanks all small creatures. In a racing situation, of course, it uh, means the opponent will need something special to have a chance. Sometimes, of course, you're facing like a more controlling deck or a mill deck, and this doesn't do much, so it's not always amazing, but when it's good, it's usually great. Sir Farron is going to be difficult to cast on turn 2. Uh, the only real synergy I have with it is the uh, Appetites to pump it, which of course is quite strong if we can pull that off. And it is also a knight for any potential knight synergies, like the two Swordmasters and the uh, five mana Barrow Witches. Although getting back Sir Farron in the late game is usually not amazing. There is another Barrow Witches. If I want to go deeper on the five drops to get back my Sir Conrads, but maybe then the curve starts getting a bit uh, out of control. I'm a big fan of Wicked Guardian, especially if we have cards like uh, Curious Pair, and cards like Rose Thorn Acolyte, which we do have two of, to synergize with it, as we can easily deal two damage and draw a card. And then Reaper of Night is also a nice finisher, with potentially some adventure synergies, nice with a, a Lucky Clover. So a lot of great cards, but at the end of the day, I think I'm leaning towards Revenge of Ravens, and hopefully we can wheel one of the aforementioned cards. Third pick. Well, we don't have much removal, so another Scalding Cauldron wouldn't be bad. There's another Rose Thorn, although don't know if we need many more. And uh, Lost Legion, I guess, is going up in value now that we have Double Swordmaster to synergize with it. 
So it's probably between Cauldron and Legion at this point. I think I'm leaning Cauldron just to help us deal with evasive creatures that we currently can block. Alright, a couple options here. Can take our Spider to have a Reach creature. Can take Skewer since we are a pretty creature heavy deck. Um, and of course we do care about food tokens a little bit. So this is between Skewer, Spider and Legion. And yeah, could make a case for each one of them. My late game consists mostly of winning with Sir Conrad. I don't have a great alternative game plan, so maybe picking up a giant skewer to kind of enhance my creatures to keep attacking, maybe make food for the Tempting Witch could be an alternative angle of attack. And yeah, looking at our non-creature spells, we don't have many of them. So skewer does look pretty decent in our deck. Also good with uh, Osworn Knights that has to attack each turn, so we can make sure it can at least uh, make profitable attacks. So I think I'll take the skewer here, hopefully we can get a spider later. Don't hate the Golden Egg, just to cantrip and draws the better cards in the deck more consistently. It also synergizes well with our uh, two Tempting Witches and the uh, Noble. Don't think we need another Noble, don't think this is a Weapon Rack deck. And I'm probably not playing Ginger Brutes. So let's take the Egg. Ooh, wow, that's a gift. Six big Trail of Crumbs. And yeah, we've got quite a food cards in the deck already with double Golden Egg, double Tempting Witch, the Foreboding Fruit and Fierce Witch Talker, even the Cabin. So Trail should be excellent. And yeah, I might play the Curious Pair as another food maker. Don't think anything else is a consideration. If we were playing best of three, I would definitely take the Spectre Shriek. Don't think I'm main decking it in best of one. Maybe I play a Lost Legion. And another Appetite, maybe make the cuts. And we even wield the Barrow Witches, which we didn't pick up any more expensive cards in the meantime, so I could play two of them, since we do have quite a few Knights. Speaking of which, this is a Knight as well, in case I need another two drop. Alright, so we ended up with a reasonable deck. Uh, the only real kind of uh, thing the deck is missing is more removal. Don't have any bacon to a pies, don't have any reef souls. So if my opponent has some strong utility creature, like uh, Sir Conrad for example, then we don't have a way to deal with it. But so it goes. So let's make a couple cuts. Ginger Brute is gone. Nobles may be cuttable, Squire can go, Dummy is definitely cuttable, I could shave one Appetites, don't think I need to main deck Return to Nature, a Lost Legion is cuttable, and I think I like Double Barrow Witches, just to make sure we can keep getting Conrad back if it gets answered. So I need to make eight cuts. It's quite a lot. So let's cut all those. Put all our interaction in one pile, kind of. So this is kind of how the curve looks like. So yeah, could potentially shave some of these two drops. Once Upon a Time looks quite good in this deck, since we do have mostly creatures we want to find with it. So I could see Shaving the Noble, how many knights do we have? So Falmar Knight, Double Swordmaster, the Riders and Knights, Oathsworn Knights, and then Double Sir Conrad. Yeah, I mean, Revenge of Ravens can definitely be dead in some matchups, but the power level is still quite high. So I don't know if I want to give up on it. I could cut one Barrow Witches. I think I want to play both Tempting Witches, because we do use food tokens quite well, even if it's not on the Witch's ability. Now that we picked up Trail of Crumbs, Merleaf Rider, we've got some good uh, outlets for those food tokens. The Appetite as well gives us a bit of uh, additional instant speed interaction, which is nice. 
So I think the Noble can go. I don't think I'm often going to want to sack food tokens to it. I could see shaving the Curious Pair since we have plenty of two drops and like a 1-3 is okay, but I don't have like the 4-2 that deals 2 damage to synergize with it. And I think I prefer Golden Egg usually. I think drawing a card is uh, most of the time going to be better than the 1-3. Don't have any synergies with adventure creatures like the Innkeeper where we would want Curious Pair. So I need to make three more cuts. Definitely looking like a 17 land deck, even with double acolytes. I do still like double acolytes since we do have quite a bit of card draw between the Falmar Knight, double golden egg, and some mana sinks with double Sir Conrad. I could see cutting Giant's Cure. It is a way to turn my weaker creatures into actual threats. But like, Sir Conrad doesn't really want to get into too many fights. It is okay with the Barrow Witches. Adversary doesn't need any improvement since it has Death Touch. Witch Talker, 4 4 Trampler can usually attack. The Tempting Witches, I can turn those into 3-4s, um, so that turns them into relatively good uh, threats as well. It's okay with the Oathsworn Knight, which is forced to attack. The Acolytes can turn into threats if I don't need them for mana. Swordmasters are pretty vulnerable, but they do demand to be answered if we give them plus two plus one, since the opponent can't really outrace them otherwise. So I think the skewer is still fine. Maybe I can cut the appetites. Because I can't hit appetite of trail of crumbs. And uh, we've got giant skewer to increase our creatures instead. Maybe one cauldron, although it's our main answer to flying creatures. Could always shave a golden egg if I don't know what to cut. I don't think I want to go below 17 lands, because we have some good mana sinks between the Skewer, the Trail of Crumbs, and the Sir Conrads. So I feel like we can use our mana quite well in the late game. I, I do like the fact that Appetite kind of fills the gap that maybe we have with uh, the lack of removal, giving us that needed interaction. So I don't really want to cut to Appetite, but yeah, this is tough. Yeah, maybe I can cut a Barrow Witches. It feels bad to do so, but maybe it's fine. If I cut Barrow Witches, it's more reasonable to shave a land, because we do have double Acolyte and double Golden Agus Cantrips. And I also have Forever Young to get back creatures, so one Witches, one Forever Young could be enough. So maybe 16 lands is fine then. And then I need to make one more cut, because Once Upon a Time can also find lands so between Once Upon a Time, Double Golden Egg, Double Acolyte, we might have enough ways to find lands when we need them. Maybe one Tempting Witch. They do sometimes get better in multiples in the sense that if uh, they can potentially kill one, if I have two of them, it's a more reliable way to end the game. But I guess there's also some diminishing returns, because if they don't kill my first witch, the second witch doesn't do anything. So maybe that's okay. And I still have plenty of 3-drops. I guess this is fine. 16 lands. We cut one of the expensive cards. The curve is relatively low. We've got some cantrips, got some mana creatures. Keep the appetite to have some more instant speed interaction. Not sure what the Barrow Witches is doing here, floating in the air. And then the mana base is uh, tricky too. Slightly more black cards than green cards. But, um, of course, there's this cabin, which wants quite a few for us as well. So maybe an even split, given the golden eggs and the acolytes, is fine. And gotta have the golden egg as a sleeve. Alright, how do we call this? Get it? Because there's witches and it's a food deck. And, yeah, the sand seems good enough. So an aggressive green deck. Right, so I can uh, drain for one, play another Swordmaster. Currently don't have anything I need to ramp into with my Acolytes. Seems okay. I 
get to trade and gain two. Alright, that one I can't attack into. Ooh, but there's Sir Conrad, so had I played Acolyte I could have maybe cast Conrad now, but that's okay. Just play this and pass. Alright, so we're pretty all in on Sir Conrad getting us there. I guess I can attack with my Acolytes. Ah, sadly they have the Barrage. So now we want to draw our Witches to get Conrad back. Falmar Knights. Set for two. Alright, so our opponent was maybe missing a color, which explains why I didn't do much in the meantime. Another rat cap. Alright. And nice, Bear Witches can get back Sir Conrad. So how much mana do I have total? Six, seven, eight. So sadly I can't do both. So then I might as well attack with my Acolytes. And then play Bear Witches, I think, over Adversary. And then next turn I might be able to potentially play Adversary and Sir Conrad. Maybe I should also keep land in hand here in case of a uh, Reaper making me discard too. But then I wouldn't have the opportunity to play both lands if I draw one and then I can play Sir Conrad and Adversary in the same turn. So it's actually a close call here whether or not I should play my land. Would my opponent splash a Reaper? And if they had one, wouldn't they have played it already? I think I still play it. Red Caps attack. I'm fine if they trade a trick here for the Barrow Witches. I guess I could also take it. And then maybe block when I have Conrad in play. Um, I mean, my opponent's also kind of losing the race if they don't add anything significant to the board. But in theory, I'm fine with the trade here. I guess I'll wait. Also have the Golden Egg to gain more life. Merrily Frider could be good too. So yeah, I guess it's Conrad plus Rider instead of activate Conrad. And then these two can attack, so we'll play Conrad first. Could also be reasonable not to play Rider and just keep up mana for Golden Egg and Conrad. Now let's play it. Alright, a red cap melee killing Conrad, sure. Has to sacrifice a land. Gonna have difficulty blocking the Paladin and attacking into it. It's a nice pickup. Start there. It's also funny that we can use this to deal two to my opponent. Let's see if I deal two, put them to six. I have two food, so two things have to block this. One blocks here. I deal five. So I'm one short of killing them. Yeah, I think I still draw. Uh, 
All right, well, now I can use the rider three times if I want to. And then I would hit him for uh, eight exactly. So that seems worth it. So I guess I should move to combat, go full control here, just to... Alright, and now... Alright, gotta make sure I target the other one now. First rank damage happens, and we kill them with regular damage. All right, sweet. Yeah, Merle Frider sacrificed itself for the greater good. All right, decent opening hands. I've got a Skewer to maybe make food for the trail, Acolyte, plus a Witch Stalker to make the food to go with the trail as well. Facing Weasel back. It's an aggressive red deck. And the foods against an aggressive deck can also help us offset potential uh, aggressive start for my opponents. Hopefully the Witch Stalker can hold the fort here. Currently no knights in the graveyard for the witches. Alright, so they might have the Rimrock Knights to pump their creature that we block. Which is fine. If we block here they can just pump this twice and trade. So we'd rather make them use it and block Wolverine. They're not too likely to give this first strike at instant speed here. Suppose I could have Thrill of Possibility plus a pump spell, but just Thrill by itself isn't enough. Barge in, sure. Still trade. The Tempting Witch can trade off for the Rat Cap, and then I could sack a food, but then we don't get to pay for a trail. So I'm probably just playing Skewer here. And then we can start uh, sacking our foods and drawing more cards with the Trail of Crumbs. All right, that's a good one. So now I don't have any good blocks, we'll take six. Don't think we want to be casting fruit right now. So I can either use my food and go digging with trail, could play witches without value just to have a 3-4 blocker in play, which is reasonable. Could also equip skewer if I find a land of trail of crumbs. I can still equip skewer. So I think I'm digging first. And yeah, I think I'll take land over golden egg. And hope we can uh, stabilize here. I'm okay trading for red cap still. If they attack with both, probably block trainer. So how much damage is this? Seven? If it goes unblocked, but then I can gain a bunch of life next turn. Sure. 
Forever Young can get back my Witchstalker, and I can play it, that seems acceptable. Cards like Searing Barrage here could be scary. Totally fine trading for the Raiders. And I think I'll get my food out of the deal. Don't really plan to kill them with Tempting Witch anytime soon. I uh, could also double block if we fear a pump spell. Although it has to be one that pumps toughness as well, which there's not too many, Bargen is one of the few. But I guess I don't really care if like they ch kill Witchstalker over Tempting Witch. Uh, let's see. And I would get my token regardless. Sure. And I don't really want to spend mana re-equipping this cure, so if they kill Witchstalker instead I'm actually happy. I want to spend some mana on the Trail of Crumbs instead basically. Ooh, Revenge of Ravens, that has to be good. Probably still go digging with Trail, if I find a land I can still play Revenge afterwards. And if we find something great, we'll cast something great. I do have some double black cards at 3 mana, so I'll tap the forests. Ooh, Falmer Knights. That's decent too. So is a Swordmaster, probably take Falmar Knights, and then question is do I play it or do I sack another food to the trail? What I could do is sack another food right now, if I find a Swamp I can play this as a 1-1. One -one. And given the Foreboding Fruit I'm not gonna run out of cards anytime soon. I could adventure it, but if they Searing Barrage me here I could be taking a lot of damage and I, I don't mind having the extra blocker in play. So I think I'm gonna go with uh, Sack Food and kinda look for a Swamp. Alright, and I'm okay just playing the Falmar Knight here. Again with like Foreboding Fruits and two Food Tokens in play still. I'm gonna be busy casting a lot of cards and drawing a lot of cards. So better safe than sorry. And if this trades, I can still get it back with the Barrow Witches. The board seems relatively stable. Gotta start thinking about winning the game, but there's Sir Conrad, definitely helps with that. 22 cards remaining still. So how about just play Sir Conrad and pass, and then activate Conrad once end of turn. And if uh, Sir Conrad dies, I can still get it back. Could also think about uh, activating my barrel, my Tempting Witch instead, but then I wouldn't be able to pay the one for Trail of Crumbs. The one card we have to think about here is another Barge in, giving the Red Cap Trample potentially. Fling. Alright. Is this uh, trying to kill Sir Conrad, maybe? They still need to target something. I mean, I'm gonna activate Sir Conrad anyway, I think, so might as well. Wait, what just happened? Did they maybe fling targeting their own creature by accident? Well, that's awkward. Yeah, that's a shame, but we were probably winning this game regardless. And we ranked up. Alright, sweet. So far, so good. So we're on the play. Uh, hand could be okay if we 
find a third lands. If we find a swamp for burning fruit is turned on, I can still draw with the Falmar Knight. If I draw forest, of course, I get to play my Merrily Friar or two. If we don't draw any lands, then this hand is in trouble. Although I can always play Falmar Knight as a 1 1 Death Touch to block if we're up against an aggressive deck. So there's definitely a fail case here if there's no land in the top three. But I think I'm still okay keeping this. And I don't think I play Falmar Knight turn one yet. Kinda wait to see what my opponent does, whether or not I draw land. Did not draw the land, and my opponent played a 2 1. So I think I'm okay just uh, playing this now. And yeah, hopefully next turn we draw land. And green whites. I don't necessarily want to trade Falmar Knight for v Venerable Knight here since they might have some bigger creatures they're not even going to offer, so I guess that, that works for me. Alright, nice. So I can cast a Foreboding Fruit to kind of make sure I keep hitting my land drops. Might be able to play this for 2 mana if I draw Forest and they play a green card. Uh, I think getting the Oathsworn Knight in play as early as possible is probably going to benefit me. So we'll do that instead. And then the Bear Witches can potentially get it back. And we'll hit for one. A Wonder Mare. And a Scalding Cauldron, so Knight is forced to attack. Falmar Knight will play defense. And we'll draw with the fruits. Alright, there we go. So next turn I can potentially play both green cards in the same turn. So a bit of a, an awkward start, but we're recovering nicely. Always hoping to draw Sir Conrad, of course. Trail of Crumbs would be good. Happy to block the Wonder Mare. Opponent could have an outflank to kill my Falmar Knights. Trading here does mean that this will cost 4 again instead of 2, but so it goes. And there's the outflank. That's fine. Can hit for 4, play Adversary, and then what else? Can play Acolytes, can use Cauldron to try and kill Wondermare. Opponent not doing anything, a little strange, but maybe they're just kind of pinched on white mana. Not able to play Guide Mother. Small chance they have the Carver here to pump Wondermare if we try and kill it with Cauldron, which makes sense too. Either way, start here. Yes, if they do have a Carver, then I don't love uh, using Cauldron here because then we're making them use the 2 mana, while otherwise they wouldn't be able to use 2 mana. But of course, now I get the chance to trade for Wonder Mare with Cauldron potentially, whereas if I wait, they get to play Guide Mother, and then it's out of range. I can do it in their upkeep. Yeah, that's probably the play here. That way, if they do have Carver, they have to waste the mana in their turn. The downside is that uh, Wonder Mare would hit for additional damage. But I always have the option to just trade for Adversary too, which isn't the end of the world. So I think that's what I'll do. Just upkeep Cauldron the Wonder Mare. Uh, let's see if they have a Carver. Now of course they could also have a white pump spell like Squire. But then uh, I can still trade for Adversary if I want to. And there's a Carver as we expected. Sure. So I don't think I mind trading for the Wonder Mare. Don't have a great answer to it otherwise. And taking 5 is quite a lot if they attack. If they attack with both, do I still block Wonder Mare or eat the knight for free? Of course I can always sack the food to gain life if I want to. Opponent is down to 11. They haven't blocked the Oathsworn Knight yet. 
So they could decide to just hang back with Wandermare to block the Oathsworn instead. Uh, almost, not quite. So we're just gonna attack and play both green cards. And then the question is, do I play my cabin? Um, if I play cabin, then I could witches back the Falmar Knight and play it in the same turn. So I think I do. I guess the Acolyte means I could do it anyway. But now I can potentially attack with my Acolyte as well. And we drew the forest so we got punished a little bit. Let's see here, five. So yeah, Falmer Knight is still the only knight. Unless I want to use Merleaf Rider. But I don't really see a reason to use the ability on Rider. They might block it anyway, which is fine. And then I can make the play of witches get back rider, but then the acolyte is still fine to attack. So I think we send everyone. And then if they trade for my mirror leaf, I can uh, witches it back. Yeah, I could have also gone for witches, get back Falmar Knight and then Adventure Knights if the acolyte doesn't attack. But I think I want to apply the pressure here. My opponent's at 11. They don't have any amazing blocks. And we still have good value plays left in the deck. So, opponent probably has some instant speed trick here, otherwise they probably would have played Carver over Squire. Falmar Knight would kind of be the more value-oriented play. But I kind of want to get this game over with. And the more aggressive play makes Oathsworn Knights a more desirable attacker. Although Price Griffin lines up pretty well here. Golden Egg, see what we draw. I can force them to block a rider with both creatures. Hit for six, and then this would trade for Squire. Alternatively, I can just keep the food to gain life. The Oathsworn Knight runs into Griffin. They might trade for Rider anyway. Take three. I think I go with the aggressive line here. I put my opponent at two. They still have Griffin back. They can play one of their adventure creatures, so I'm not going to be able to kill them next turn. Unless I draw something. But it does mean my opponent's going to kind of stay on the defensive instead of being able to attack me back as well. So it's close. Six life can represent maybe a turn. And yeah, Sir Conrad can potentially also burn them out if we draw one. Don't think there's a huge downside to keeping land in hand. I've already cast my foreboding fruits. Alright, I think we attack with both. Griffin probably goes in front of Oathsworn Knights and then they can double block, but then we get to trade for both. And as the dust settles, it's Griffin versus a 2-2 knight basically. Do they have any better blocks? Don't think so. I guess they could like block Griffin plus something else on the witch. I get to kill that something else and no. Nah, basically ends up the same, I think. We have drawn a couple more lands on our opponents. 
So hopefully we can find some spells to get across the finish line here. Sir Conrad, probably our best draw. Got two of those. Uh, Forever Young can get back a bunch of creatures. Would also be good. Tempting Witch can burn them out. Shepherd as a 3 1. Yeah, let's go digging. And there's Sir Conrad. Anything better? Sword Master can put them to 1, not quite lethal. Make sure to keep black mana untapped here. And I guess I'll just activate this right away. And my opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. Once upon a time, finds Sir Conrad, which finds the win. Well, it was a pretty short fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a Sir Conrad at the end. And a solid opening hand. Ooh. Uh, let's see, do I have any one drop? Other than Falmar Knights, I guess Scalding Cauldron, but I can't find that with Once Upon a Time. So I think I wait a turn. Alright, I landed this. Uh, let's see, I don't need more than triple green. I guess it's close. I need three forests in play for the cabin. I need three swamps for fruit, but I guess fruit is going to the bottom. Uh, Sir Conrad sometimes wants more black mana. I think I'll go for the forest in case of cabin. Make sure to play the Swamp still, in case we draw the Oathsworn Knights. Revenge, probably not going to be amazing in this game. Uh, do we want to trade here? Not necessarily. Imagine my opponent playing like an Innkeeper next turn, and I might want to ride her to kind of force them to block. So I think we're okay just playing Witch and Passing. Alright, I guess now we kind of regret it a little bit. Can still double block, but then we would lose both creatures. Opponent's gonna hang back. Cauldron. Alright. Um, could attack and then if they block Cauldron to finish it off. Not an amazing trade. Think I'm better off just playing Adversary. And which is as a 3 4. Alright, so we can make some interesting plays. I could play Golden Egg, force both to block Rider, so my adversary connects and I draw a card, but then I'm losing a lot of resources just to draw that card, which doesn't seem worth it. If adversary trades, I could Forever Young it back, but then I can't play it this turn. So maybe I just play Golden Egg, see what we get. Probably should have not tapped my swamp in case I drew Oathsworn Knight here. And then uh, I could play both cauldrons. I could keep one in hand in case of a Reaper making me discard so I can keep these two. Although it's unclear how good revenge is going to be this game. Probably okay to play one cauldron and keep the other one in hand. Although I guess if I play both cauldrons and I draw land I could sack both next turn to kill something. 
Although, how likely am I to do that? Not very. Cabin maker food. And there's a tree folk. Second double block with rider and witch, which seems fine. This can trade for the tree folk. Don't think I want to use a witch for a three damage, doesn't seem worth it. Hello, Sir Conrad. Alright, that's uh, the play here. If I trade, I can get back adversary for with Forever Young and plate for two mana, so that's pretty decent. I think I'm okay with the trade here. Could see instant speed removal on Conrad. Trail of Crumbs, also excellent here. But I think I like the Forever Young play. And then I can get back two creatures. And then upkeep, I could still use Sir Conrad to mill the rider if I don't want to draw it. But then I get to drain for a bit more. I could also wait on Forever Young in case Conrad dies. Maybe that's better. But then I need to deal with the tree folk in the meantime. Nah, let's just uh, do this. And then we've got Trail to grind them out. And then do I play Cauldron now? Probably still hold it in case of a uh, discard. Wow, alright. Opponent must have had a hand full of lands if they're conceding there. They didn't do anything with 7 mana, so maybe they just flooded. Alright, for a note. On the draw. Probably can keep this on the draw. We've got a turn to Swordmaster. Any land lets us play these two. Fruit can draw us into more lands to play Conrad. Ooh, nice. Again, probably gonna wait a turn. And looking for a lance here. Yep. Now I think I play Swamp in case I draw another Swamp and want a Foreboding Fruit on 3 or turn 4 maybe. I'm fine with the trade. I mean, I guess I could take 3 and just hit them back for 2 lifelink. And trade for Tempting Witch. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fine too. And then maybe just play Rose Thorn. And if they want to sack their Golden Egg to force a trade here, that's fine by me. Otherwise, there's a chance I can play Conrad on four. Do they have a combo trick? No. All right. So I don't have to trade here. I could wait until I can equip Skewer on my Swordmaster. And given Conrad, we kind of want to wait until we trade anyway. 
So this turn, we could Tempting Witch, we could Foreboding Fruit, we could Golden Egg plus Giant Skewer. That's the most mana efficient. And that maybe sets up Skewer to be equipped next turn on the Swordmaster. So I don't mind that. Golden Egg first in case we find a better 2 mana play. Alright, Cabin. So yeah, next turn I might uh, equip Skewer. Opponent has been missing some land drops. Although the spinning wheel makes mana. Alright, I think I still like uh, Skewer equip attack. This is 3 mana so I can't do anything else, but I'll play the Cabin. And now we've got a nice uh, assortment of food to go with our Trail of Crumbs. Probably still leaning Conrad first, as it could potentially just attack for 5. Ooh, wow. Alright, well that's about as good as it gets. Revenge, not quite what I want to do here. Yeah, Wicked Wolf is going to be hard to beat. I can Rider plus Equip. Tempting Witch plus Rider, technically. Double blocks Wicked Wolf if they don't have food. I guess we'll double spell. And yeah, that cabin's very good with a Wicked Wolf in play, so probably not winning this game. And they had the Outmuscle too. Because if they didn't have more foods, then I could potentially set up a Rider to kill Wicked Wolf. If we drew a pump spell or if we equipped a skewer. But now that no longer works. If I equip skewer, I can force my opponent to block with a curious pair and then I get a food in return anyway. So just kind of eat their 1 3, which isn't amazing, but it's something. And then I get to play Golden Egg as well. Probably should have uh, kept up double black here. All right. And then next turn I could potentially do the same, but also with a trail in play to start drawing some extra cards. And then the revenge can make it difficult for my opponent to potentially race. Sure, so this wolf is basically unkillable. Another Sir Conrad's not bad. This Wicked Wolf is definitely an issue and it's pretty big, so the revenge is pretty marginal in the face of it. Opponent might block anyway with the Acolyte, so I don't need to sack food to the rider. This is 5 mana to tap. I think I'll try this. Probably fine with a trade. I see. All 
All right. So the wolf can become a 9-9. Nine nine. So they could have killed me had they used spinning wheel. Because then they could have hit for 7 plus 4 is 11. So maybe they missed that. Um, yeah, I'll take it. I think I missed it too, otherwise I should have definitely forced the rider and acolyte trade, basically. Alright, they had an appetite anyway. Fair enough. Well, the wolf definitely turned this game around. I think... Uh, any other card we probably can beat. Alright, 4 and 1. Alright, on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Hopefully we're up against the green deck and we get to adversary turn 2. I guess probably turn 3 more likely. Definitely taking it if they attack. Alright, we've seen this start before. And I'm okay using my appetite here if they block. And they're pretty likely to block, I would say. Oh, never mind, so now I guess I don't get to do anything. But uh, I did gain two, so that's nice. Sure. Dwarven mine indicates that they're probably mono reds. And I think I still adversary before dropping Revenge of Ravens. Just give ourselves the opportunity to maybe snowball card advantage. Right, another door for mine, pretty good. And a dragon fire. Alright. Well, the revenge is looking uh, pretty good here. That's for sure. And then do we play Cabin or Swamp? Think I'm leaning Cabin. Well, Revenge is not good in every matchup, but this is definitely one where it shines. The Ginger Brutes are basically rendered useless. Alright, this is potentially a problem. Can become a 3-4 double striker, so I guess Appetite can still make a trade here, which is nice. And no knights in the graveyard, so we'll take the Witch Talker, I think. Now the Fireborn can attack. Appetite now plus 5 plus 5 potentially. Mm, 
another one, all right. Well, I will gain a pretty big chunk of life. And Sir Conrad is a perfect finisher here. Do I play the witch? I think I'm better off just uh, activating Conrad as much as possible. Sword Knight not amazing here, as it's forced to attack. So I might be better off just using Conrad three times or two times and playing the Witch. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play Witch and then double activate Conrad's. Could also just mill the opponent here, 17 cards remaining. Not quite. So I can activate Conrad four times. I guess my opponent might make a big attack next turn and I want the extra blocker. Can always sack food to gain life if we're in trouble. Opponent can also sack the Ginger Brutes for life. So it's probably going to come to decking if I had to guess. And opponent's got a few cards less than us in the deck. Sir Kara would have been pretty scary. So I don't think I sack any food to the Witch quite yet. <laughs> Another Sir Conrad, it is legendary, so I wouldn't be needing that anytime soon. So, Knight has to attack. Yeah, without Revenge of Ravens, we definitely would have died a long time ago. Ooh, wow, Castle Ambrith. That's quite a land to have. Well, now their one-powered creatures actually do damage. Yeah, that's a good one. Looks like they misclicked a little bit. I mean, I can just trade for Conrad and then activate Conrad four times on the way out. Or I can just double block with Swordmaster and Witches. Yeah, I feel like I, I'm okay with the trade here. As strange as it may seem. All right, I probably should have double blocked with the Tempting Witch to prevent one point of trample if they use a castle. That's for sure. Hmm. 
Can use a Rose Thorn to make extra black mana. And they might just block with the Fireborn on the Oathsworn and activate it. But now I'm also just close to killing them with Tempting Witch. And then I think we just pass. Eight cards remaining, so close to just milling them here. I think I can afford to take four. Can I kill them in any way if I like make some trades? Block Swordmaster plus Witch. Those trade, three Conrad triggers. I can activate the Witch on the way out. Six. I mean... It's probably okay. Maybe should have activated Sir Conrad before blocks once to just see how many creatures we could find first and then decide. This should do it. Alright, so Sir Conrad to the rescue. Or, well, I guess Revenge of Ravens to the rescue for the most part. And then Conrad's a nice one to close out the game. So we're 5 and 1. All right, on the play, decent hands. Don't know yet if I'm supposed to play Swordmaster on two or if I'm gonna prioritize kind of hitting my land drops with Golden Egg against a white aggressive deck. Don't mind getting Swordmaster in play. Opponent reconsiders the attack. If they have an outflank, I don't mind. Not our castle, Embereth. Pretty scary with the rat cap. Alright, don't have a great answer for the rat cap at the moment. So I have four mana if I don't attack with acolytes. I can uh, draw with Falmar Knight and play it. If I draw land, I can play Rider. Seems okay. That's fine. Happy to trade with it. Question is which creature trades. 
Um, I guess Swordmaster I can get back with the Witches. But so can the Rider. I just imagine the ability from Rider potentially coming up here. We can make food whenever we want. Although none of them attack into the rat cap at the moment. Alright. So... I could bear witches back the Swordmaster here. Seems okay. And now I get to benefit from the adventure half. Ooh, Appetite. That's a good pickup, although opponent does have a lot of open mana. So I don't think I want to pull the trigger now. Instead, I can play Falmar Knight, Adventure, and play this. Seems okay. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to attack with the Barrow Witches, which has a profitable attack on the board. And I'm okay trading for Red Cap plus uh, Castle Activation. And then I could still Appetite if I want to. So I'll attack with just the Witches. And then we'll wait and see. Alright. Sure. And then next turn I could go Golden Egg plus maybe Appetite, sacking the Egg for plus 5 plus 5. Or I can activate uh, Rider's ability. Revenge seems decent. Although I don't need to play it right now. Sir Conrad A. Eh? That plus Forever Young is quite a combo. Do I just attack with the Witches again? Because if I attack with all, they can have a profitable block with the Rat Cap. If I done Appetite and they have a trick, that's bad for me. And then maybe just Foreboding Fruits. Although then I should have tapped my forest, I guess. Opponent takes it. Yeah, should have had an extra food token here, I guess. Well, that saves me a couple clicks, I guess. Six and one, time for the final boss. On the play with keepable hands. Another red-white aggro deck. Once upon a time a turn late. Could have used the adventure to cast Tempting Witch in case they kill Acolyte. I at least get to cast one of my black spells. I can once upon a time to find black mana, golden egg can fix, so I've got some options. I could play Cauldron and then pass. That way Acolyte blocks Knight. If they have a trick, I can activate Cauldron. And then end of turn I can once upon a time. That seems decent. Although I do miss my land drop for the turn. That's the only downside here. Or I could also just adventure the Knight, I guess. Alright, removes its activated abilities. 
I guess now I adventure Falmar Knights over once upon a time to use a black mana and then the Tempting Witch, if I find black mana, just blocks the knight profitably anyway, so I don't need to kill it right away. Yeah, that's a good draw. So this doesn't block all that well. Problem is, if I want to block with Tempting Witch and have a trick, that's bad, and I want to keep up uh, Cauldron, but I guess we'll find out whether or not to attack into it. And just a Guide Mother. And pass. Right, so they're not doing much over there. Giant Skewers, interesting. Don't have the mana to play and equip this turn. So might start with Once Upon a Time to guarantee my land drop for the turn. And take it from there. And Cabin. I might need double black, but it is a food, which is nice. I think double black is more important. And like, sure I could sack the egg to make black mana, but I might need double black for multiple turns. And then I'm kind of throwing away the upside of cabin making a food if I'm sacking my food to fix my mana. And then... Uh, play Falmar Knight, I could skewer, I could golden egg. I guess I'll golden egg to give myself more options for next turn. Alright, so we've got some removal for small stuff. Not under too much pressure. Brush my Falmar Knights without Adamant. Pretty happy with that exchange considering we have a Barrow Witches. Alright, that makes more sense. Harmonious Archon. Yeah, that's a bomb. Take six, I guess. Yeah, I need double cauldron to kill it, but I can't play both and activate them in the same turn. I mean, I could cauldron any of their other creatures, of course, but then I'm just dying to the Archon. So I need to kill Archon, but if I don't, like, I don't get to kill it now and I'm just gonna die to it next turn. I can sack some food to gain life this turn, play cauldron, but is it enough to survive? So this is 13, I guess I can only gain 6, so I guess I miscounted. Yeah, I can cauldron one thing and gain 3, but it's not enough. Yeah, I guess I'm dead. Oh well. Yeah, Archon's very good in limited. And that's where not having any actual removal to kill it, uh, hurt us. Sure. Probably play a swamp in case of foreboding fruits. They've got something for one mana. Could be a Rimrock Knight, could be a Redcap Melee. Don't really want to trade here. And yeah, we keep uh, facing these raging rat caps, which we can't attack into with the Swordmaster. And I've turned once upon a time, looking for Sir Conrad. So 
So I could put Acolyte in front of Ratcap. They probably have the Rimrock Knight, we suspect. And then Witch in front of Dummy, but then they can pump this and use the Rimrock Knight, so they could, would basically get two good trades. Could just put Swordmaster in front of Dummy. They probably have a follow-up that blocks this. On the off chance they don't, I guess I would prefer not to trade it off right away, but I probably don't care too much about the Tempting Witch. So let's try this. Because this forces him to spend mana. And then I can attack back with Swordmaster. There's a Rimrock Knight. Adversary or Barrow Witches. Probably Adversary. And there's Sir Conrad, right on time. So I might bait... I guess we have Forever Young to get it back. But I think I still bait with Adversary first. I could keep back Acolyte, and then if they kill Adversary, I can block Rat Camp. Nah, let's attack. Cauldron can kill Rat Camp pretty nicely. Or I can play Sir Conrad's. Nah. Let's do this. That way we get to hit with my lifelinker. No real reason to play Conrad first. There's no, like... Deal damage to attacking creature type spell. Possible my opponent is missing a color. Yep, there's a white mana. Can attack with all pretty safely. And then Forever Young can uh, also drain them out. Sweet, so... 7-2, featuring uh, Double Sir Conrad. Pretty fun draft overall. And yeah, I, I think I started to notice a trend where removal spells don't appear as often in drafts anymore as they used to. I remember drafts at the start of the format where we got like four or five bake into a pies doesn't seem to happen as much anymore so maybe the bots have been adjusted to, to address that so we got to get used to these decks without much removal but for now i want to thank everyone for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.